All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and jump into a trading journal. Okay, this is going to be what you're, I, I do mine in an Excel sheet. And basically what this is, is I record each and every trade that I take. So I actually found one trade. Now I have two monitors, so I'll be throwing this over on the left monitor when we actually start looking at the charts. But right here, I will record absolutely everything. I record the date, the day, the month, the entry time, the currency pair, the in, the chart time, the time frame, the interval, 60 minutes, you know, trading system, whatever I named it, the total lot size. When you're trading currency, guys, you're going to be... Um, when you're trading Forex, there are different lot sizes that most uh, brokers will have. You will have a a micro lot account, which will just be a thousand units of whatever currency. So if it's the dollar yen, you're going to be exchanging your dollars to yen in about a thousand increments, okay? A thousand dollars in the US dollars to whatever the equivalent is in the yen and so on and so forth. Um, so th th this defines the, the lot size. Uh, this is a mini lot account. So the micro lot's about, I think, a thousand unit size um, versus I think uh, this is a mini lot, which is about a 10,000 unit size. And then there's a standard lot size account, which is about a 100,000, okay? Now, if you're like, well, I don't have a hundred thousand, I don't have ten thousand dollar account. Well, you're gonna have to trade on margin, meaning you're gonna have to borrow money from the broker in order to trade. This can be very dangerous if you don't do this right. Okay, if you are trading on margin, which you're gonna have to. I mean, I just told you I'm gonna start off with a three thousand dollar account. As you can see, my initial starting uh, equity in my account is three grand, not ten thousand. So how am I gonna be able to do this? I'm gonna have to open up you know, a margin account where I'm going to borrow money from the broker in order to be able to take these trades. Okay. Now, if this occurs, you know, you need to be very careful. If you end up losing the money that the broker gave you, you have to pay that back. They can do something called a margin call. If you lose too much, they will lock up your account. They will sell your position and then you will end up owing the money. So, it can be very, very, very risky. So how do you, so you manage your risk with stop losses, okay? You know, here I'm only taking, I mean, this was a 29 pip potential loss, a 29, 29 pips is a dollar. So I guess I'll go over the, the actual values real quick. Micro lot account is like 10 cents per pip. Pip is the smallest movement in the market, okay? So when you go from 1.0357 to 1.0358, that is one pip in movement, okay? So it's the smallest measurement of movement. In the stock market, you would call it points, okay? In the, in the Forex market, it's called pips. Now, I only risked $29. Now, as you can see, <laughs> I lost $29. Um, my return, my profit expense, I classify as an expense, not necessarily, you know, it's an expense that you just have to pay. And I, I ended up losing $29, which gave me only 2,971. That's my equity. So guys, what I'm trying to explain here is that I, my risk was so tiny, I would never have hit a margin call. It, I never would have happened. I'm only risking the amount of money that I actually have in my account. And you got to be very careful because when you borrow money, let's say you borrow $10,000, you have $3,000, maybe you borrow seven. You need to constantly be reminding yourself that you, when you're seeing $7,000 or ten grand in your account, that is not your money. Only $3,000 of it is yours in my situation. The, the other seven is not mine. So I'm not going to go risk more than three grand on trades because if I start risking more and I start losing more than three thousand dollars, yeah, it's gonna hurt really bad. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a margin call. You know, I, I don't know if I'd get a margin call if I was to lose more than three grand, but you get the idea. If I start losing not eight nine thousand dollars, whatever their percentage is for the margin calls, yeah, they're gonna close up my account. They're gonna freeze everything. They're gonna sell my positions, and I'm gonna end up owing the money. So. No, even if I have $10,000 sitting in my account, the 10,000 is not mine. 3,000 is mine. That's mine. I will never risk more than that. But I won't but I mean, I'm not going to be risking all 3 grand anyways. Not not on one individual trade. I'm not risking 100% of my account. 
So anyways, that's just something to keep in mind. So a total, so a mini lot, which is what I'm assuming here in this column, would uh, every time it moves, uh, the pip moves, it's a dollar, okay? A micro lot, which is only a thousand units per trade, that is a 10 cents, okay? That's 10 cents for every pip that moves, okay? For every pip that you gain or lose, that's 10 cents. A standard lot, which is 100,000 units, is going to be $10. So every one pip is $10. So if it goes up from 1.0357 to 358, I just made 10 bucks. Okay, it's a double-edged sword because it, you could also increase your losses that way. So, but I think, you know, trading on a, you know, I think a micro lot account, you're not going to really you're, you're never going to get wealthy off that, but a micro lot account would be, would not be a bad idea if you were interested in uh, just forward testing and kind of teaching, getting your psychology under control and teaching you how to manage and how to be okay with putting real money at risk in the market. So I think if you trade a micro lot size, um, it's really good for your psychology, for practicing the art of trading. It's not necessarily um, going to make you wealthy. If you want something that's going to actually increase your wealth, uh, I, I would, you know, a mini lot is probably the way to go, or at least. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to give recommendations. That is, but that's what I would do. That that would be my way to go. So, and again, I guess if you wanted to trade standard, you could. But it's 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 a you know. Trading is a standard lot size account. Every pip that is gained or lost will end up adding or subtracting ten dollars. You know that that can be a sizable amount, particularly when you have multiple contracts on, multiple trades and whatnot. So, but this is the general idea. You want to include your month, your day, your entry date, your entry time, your currency pair, your chart interval or time frame, trading system, lot size, entry, stop loss. You know, this was the actual price the stop loss was at, 1.0386, but this is what it actually amounted to in terms of pips, uh, which would also amount to the amount of money, so the amount of dollars that it, that, that it would come to. You know, target one is in pips. What was the actual target one? What was the exit date? What was the exit time? The pips I earned or lost. The profit or expense, so what was it in dollars, which... I mean, seriously, I, I, it's kind of over redundant to have these two right here, but I, I do anyways. And then return per trade, $29. Now I actually have a little bit of a formula in here that is based off this, and this is my rolling return calculation. So it takes this number and it subtracts it with this column R7 and basically gives me my new total. So everything I enter in here will shift what my equity currently is. And as you can see, well, my equity took a di took a dive, um, and it probably will continue to do so. This strategy, at least on the Aussie CAD, was oh man, I forget what it was. I believe let's go over here. Um, yada yada yada. It was about thirty per thirty point two two seven percent accurate. So it was consistently making me money. But if we come over here and look at the equity curve. Yes, we were constantly losing, but when we won, man, we won big. Look at this. We went from 3,051 all the way to 3,443. I mean, we won massively. And this number right here is, is determined by the number of wins as opposed to the number of losses. I clearly had more losses than winners, but my equity size long term, I was still making money. I made $695. Now, granted, I'm going to be honest with you. $695 from 2013 to 2016, almost to the end of 2016, that's not a lot of money. It really isn't. But again, this is not your, this is with no money management whatsoever. Okay. This is with no money management whatsoever. And this is with, um, and this is also only one currency pair and only one time frame. If you've got nine different currency pairs and three time frames on each pair this your performance is going to look a lot different when you combine the performances of that entire portfolio together your portfolio will look have performance will be different as opposed to the individual performances of each trade given whatever actual chart you're looking at you know whatever market Aussie cad and whatever like 
time frame you're looking at. So, and again, this is with zero money management in it. Okay, so it's just really important to keep that in mind. It's, it's zero money management. And guys, I'm not teaching you, kind of like I mentioned earlier, I'm not showing you this stuff, you know, because I'm not giving you a recommendation to trade this strategy. It's not what I'm doing. I'm simply showing you the process that I'm going through so that you guys can see what it's really like trying to become a consistently profitable trader. And you you will be able to see all the aggravations behind it all, the ups and the downs and, and everything. Again, when people come to you already successful and things like that, sure, they've already proven that they can do it, but you lose out so much information and so much knowledge when they do that. So this is why I'm starting this now. I'm not, consi- as I've said before, I'm not consistently profitable. I haven't made any money with my blog or my business, my online business. You know, um, I haven't made any money yet. I'm not a consistently profitable trader. What I am is I'm an aspiring trader. I'm a, an aspiring entrepreneur and I'm trying to become financially free like we've talked about in the other videos. And this is how I'm attempting to do that through trading, through showing you guys how to trade or at least you know showing you guys all the things that I've learned thus far by showing you guys the processes you know I ha- I do have experience with back testing and creating training plans so I figured I'd do a video on that and kind of show you guys what it what it looked like so anyways I feel like you guys will be will be learning so much more by watching me go through this process and when I become consistently profitable you know, you guys are going to know where I came from originally and and the struggle that I had to go through. And I think it's going to make a huge impact on the community that that we're building here. But anyway, so this is basically a trade journal. Again, it's very, very simplistic. It's not difficult to understand. You know, you just want to list out as many different things as you can because, and here's why. Let's assume Let's say that it turns out that my strategy seems to be very successful on Wednesdays as opposed to Mondays. And let's assume, consistently speaking, the strategy just didn't perform very well over the summer months, but it performed excellent the rest of the year. So maybe we just say, hey, I don't trade over the summer. Or hey, if my performance doesn't do well on Friday or on Wednesday, like we mentioned, then I just won't trade on Wednesdays or Fridays or whatever that is. If it, if, if it turns out that it doesn't perform well at night, then okay, maybe I don't trade at night. So that's why we go through this. That's why we, we list out as much as we possibly can because this it will give us clues as to how to organize our trading long term. That's why you want to calculate everything. And, and the last thing you want to do is start your trading journal and not include information. Realize that you should have included it and now you have to go back and include whatever, like let's say you were not actually calculating the day. Well, you'd have to go back and, and redo all of your back testing just to include the day. Okay? So try to think of everything you can you can list of. Honestly, this is the stuff that I came up with. I really have a hard time coming up with more. I'm sure there's a heck of a lot more that you could come up with. But this is the type of stuff that I've come up with so far. So, but yeah, if you guys, you know, uh, this th- this is a general idea. This is how you create a trading journal and how you create a trading plan. And this is what you do. You know, this is, this is the reality of it all. So once you create the trading plan, start backtesting. 